Hi, so in this video I'm going to introduce the Roma Research and Development Model. So in this video I'll just give a brief introduction into the sorts of things we'll be looking at and then in future videos I will derive all the algebra and say what it actually says about our equilibrium in this economy. So the Roma R&D model was brought about because we had some issues with the learning by doing type models which we have looked at in a previous video and some of these are some some of these problems were well one of them was that it required what we might call a knife edge parameter assumption so we had that alpha plus mu it had to be equal to 1 for us to have a nice balanced growth path in our ak model we looked at and there we have a number of other models that tended to be dependent on these sorts of special cases where we, we could maybe justify having such parameter assumptions, but they won't generally tend to hold, well, in general. So if we look at different types of economies, uh, their, their parameters will likely be very different. And so there are lots of criticisms about these models that the, the assumptions they make aren't really supported by the empirical data. And then another key issue with these learning by doing models is that we are just learning by doing things. We don't actually have any deliberate investment in technological progress and it is completely unrewarded even if we did have any deliberate investment in technological progress. And this came about because we had a number of assumptions. So one of these was a, we had constant returns to scale. We also had perfect competition. And these two assum assumptions together mean that there's no profits in the model. We just have perfectly competitive firms, and if they want to scale up production, well, they would no longer be perfectly competitive because they'd be so big that they're no longer price takers. So we can't, we can't have profits when we have constant returns to scale and perfect competition. And so when we, have, when we look at how the, our, if we have this national income identity, y equals c plus i, and we think about splitting income in, in the model, we have that our income is split between our capital stock and it's split between our labor stock. And we've talked about how we have, we have sort of income shares of capital and income shares of labor. And this is all of our income. It's either allocated to capital or labor. There's nothing left to actually spend on research and development or in generating new ideas. So the only thing we have in the model of the learning by doing models is just spillovers from just each firm making their own optimal decisions. And this isn't really what we notice in reality. We, we do have that firms invest in research and development and we actually have some sort of monopoly power so learning by doing models they just assume that once once one firm learns about something every other firm can benefit from this knowledge from the learning by doing that this firm's had when in real reality we have things like patents we have copyright laws etc which mean that individual firms can benefit from conducting research and development and this is what we have in this roma r d model and you can read more in in depth on this by looking at his 1990 paper where he does sort of lay out this model and so a brief introduction to this model which then improves on these learning by doing models and the reason i've gone over the issues with the learning by doing model is because the roma model does address these and there there are still obviously some critiques to the roma model there always are critiques to models because they're not perfect representations of reality but we, we can introduce some market power and monopoly power by having three sectors to our economy. And these are, we have a final goods sector, where obviously our final goods are sold to consumers. We have an intermediate goods sector, which is firms which are sort of buying patents and they're, they're buying the monopoly rights to use the ideas which are developed by scientists in our research and development sector or our R&D sector. And so we, we obviously have an R&D sector, so we, have, we clearly have some deliberate R&D, so that, so that ticks off this box. We don't necessarily need these knife edge parameter assumptions, as I'll get into as we address and start to look at this model in the future. And we do have a reward to investment in this model. 
and because of the monopoly power we have that is generated from the fact that this R&D sector they can they get patents from the government for the ideas they create and then these this R&D sector these scientists can then sell the patents to their goods to the intermediate goods se sector and then these these ideas and this new capital or whatever's been developed by the scientists can then be used to produce goods to sell to the final goods sector so we have a very well integrated economy and so as this final line says here each sector is going to solve its optimization problem conditional on the decisions of the other sectors these sectors are all very interdependent on each other so it can get a bit complicated so i'll try to explain it in the future videos as well as i can but that is a basic introduction to the Roma R&D model. It's the sorts of things we look at, and it's a lot more complex than just a simple model like the AK model. So it may take me a few videos to go over it all. But that will wrap up this video. Please do drop a like if this was at all useful. Check out the playlist for where I will begin to solve. I think I'll start with the final goods sector and we'll do the problem of that and subscribe to add some economics to your subscription feed.